Hey everybody, welcome back to We Loved Camp. Today, I'm going to spend more of your money. We've got another list of stuff you need just to get started. And then I've got a list of stuff that you'll want and then a list of stuff that you don't know you'll need, but you'll need. Stick around, we'll be right back. Okay, everybody try and keep this short try and keep it sweet and try not to spend too much of your money but again you're gonna spend a lot of money here so let's get right to it this is for the stuff that's outside of the camper last week we went over everything that you need inside and that was a pretty decent list conveniently there was a lot of stuff last week that you already have at the house you're not gonna have a lot of these and there's a lot that you need to have. So again, we've got your list of what you need. You got your list of what you want. And listen to me now and believe me later. As in stuff you've never heard of, but you need it. So here's a few of the things that you actually have to have. And some of this depends on what kind of camping you're going to be doing. If you're going to be going to like in Ohio, our state campgrounds, all you get is electricity. You don't get a sewer. You don't get a water hookup. You have to go to a community water spigot, fill up your bucket, bring it over and dump it into your onboard tanks. Or you just pull over there and fill up like that. Either way, for that kind of camping, you're going to need different equipment. But some of it's going to be the same. So just to get started, you're going to need fresh water hose. Some people tell you to go ahead and use the green hose that you got in the backyard for watering the flowers. Don't use those. I know a lot of you drink from a water hose your entire childhood and you're still alive, but there is PB, what is it, PBA chemicals that leach from the rubber into the water. There's the brass fittings, they have lead in them. Lead, really bad, especially if you've got little ones. Just don't use those hoses. Get yourself the special clean water hoses. They're usually white. Um, Camco has a blue one out there also. Now, as far as fresh water hoses, how much do you need? Our first camping trip, I got cheap. Imagine that. And when I went to the store, I bought a little tiny hose. And it wasn't nearly enough. I had in my mind, I'll just park right by the water you don't get to choose where you park. A rule of thumb on this is whatever the length of your camper is, get one hose that's really close to that. We have a 30 foot trailer, 30, 31 foot camper actually. And I found that a 25 footer usually does the trick. And then I've got a 10 footer and a, I think a five footer that I can also hook onto that. If you have multiple hoses, then you've got options. You can get a little 90 degree elbow for where the fresh water goes into your camper. And while it seems, you know, do I need this? It's a good idea. It probably shouldn't be on the need. It should probably be on the want list. But it's just a few bucks. But what, what it does is if you put, let's say this is the side of your camper, and you put the hose and you screw it on there, it's coming off like that. And then it goes, it's pulling down like this. But if you get the little 90, it comes out and straight down like this. And you can hang your hose off of that. And even though it pulls a little bit like that, once you put one on, you'll see how the difference is. It's almost no problem. It's, we'll put it on the one. It should be over here. There we go. So then after that, you got fresh water in. Now you got to get dirty water out. On your discharge, you've got your gray water, which is all your sinks and your tub. And then you got your black water, which is just your toilets. And they both come out the same spot. So your drain water 
your drain is going to go to one hose, all of your tanks. We'll go over how to do that later. You'll want, I always call it just a poop slinky, but they've got a collapsible hose and you can set it into sh shapes. You get those, you need them, there's no way around it. You're gonna need it to dump. I recommend, I highly recommend getting a clear fitting. And you'll see with some of the, some of the sets that you get, you'll see that they come with a clear fitting. That's a good idea because otherwise you dump out your black tank first. So you dump it until it's empty. And if you don't have a visual, you don't know, cause you'll still hear water just trickling. You're done, turn it off. But if you can't see what's going on, you can't tell if it's a trickle or if it's still coming out at a good rate. So you get a clear one, and then you'll know when to turn off that tank and then turn on the gray water to rinse out your hose. So now you got your fresh water in, you got your not fresh water out. If you're going to example in Ohio State Park where you don't have the full hookups and you don't have the sewer, then you're going to need a gray water tote. Try to only put gray water in it. As soon as you put black water in it, it's going to be nasty. And the reality is you can go quite a while without draining your black tank. Again, we'll go over that on another episode. But the bigger the tank, portable tank you get, the better. They're not cheap. I don't even know what my wife spent on ours, but I know it wasn't cheap. Uh, I know that because she would not tell me what she spent. That was when we were starting. Now, the option to this, if you don't want to buy that tank, that portable tank, then day two of your camp trip, when you find out that your gray water tank is full and it's coming up into your bathtub, it's nasty, then you've got to break your camp. Everything that you did yesterday, you've got to take it all apart, hook up to it, hook up your load leveling if it's a heavy trailer, and then go over and drain it at the dump station. Then you got to come back, back in, and hook, hook up and set up everything again. So if you just get the gray water tote, then you won't have to worry about all that. Sometimes these can be a pain to transport. Sometimes, depending on what kind of trailer you have, sometimes it'll be real easy. Uh, in the back of the truck is where a lot of people like doing it, but SUVs, you don't want to put that inside. You're gonna need chalk blocks, and this is something you can't go without. Now, you'll see, you'll see the Camco plastic ones, and they work, especially like in the dirt, they'll work. If you're on a level ground, it's not too bad. But if you're on concrete or blacktop in your driveway, it doesn't take much of a slope to make your camper just spit that out. So I always say, don't get those. Or if you do get them, then they're auxiliary chalk blocks and get the big heavy rubber ones. If you look at any loading dock for truckers, for semis, anywhere where you see a semi trailer parked, you'll find big rubber chalk blocks. They are worth their weight in gold. So that's my advice on chalk blocks. Get the little cheap ones. Hopefully you'll never have a problem. There's a commercial right now where they show a camper rolling away. That's, you don't wanna do that. So anyways, so we got the chalk blocks. You need two, one for each side. And if you wanna get really anal about it, you need four. Put one for each tire, or even on each side of one of the tires, one axle. Water pressure gauge and regulator. There's a couple different kinds. You can get a regulator that has no adjustments. It's just you screw it in, and then you screw the hose to it, and you assume that it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. There's no gauge, there's no adjustments. It's like five bucks, four bucks, maybe it's 12. It's cheap. I don't recommend those. Mainly because you have no clue what it's doing. I know we had that at first, I bought it because it was cheap, and it felt like we had no water pressure. So I ended up just ditching that and getting the better one. It's not a whole lot more, 
but that one you can adjust it. Now, you'll have people tell you that you don't need a water pressure regulator. It's very cheap and it's ch cheap insurance. You'll hear people tell you that it's got PEX pipes the same as your house has. In case you don't know, this is your PEX pipe, the blue and the red plastic. I'm not sure how long it's been around, but it is the standard on new builds. Um, it's very strong. You can freeze water. It'll expand to something like 20 times its size. And then when it thaws, it'll go right back. It's pretty cool stuff. Um, no chemicals leach out of it. But the difference is, is the fittings and the way that they're put together and the people who put it together. And also the fixtures. That's also a difference. They get the absolute cheapest fittings known to man. They don't handle freezing water. They burst, they shatter. Also your fixtures. You don't have a plastic faucet in your tub at home. You don't have plastic faucet in the sink. They're cheap, they're junk. Get a water pressure regulator so that you're not stressing the plumbing on your camper. You'll also get some campgrounds where they don't have good flow so they bump up the pressure to force the water into the campers. Flow and pressure are two different things. They're usually hand in hand, but you can use one to compensate when you don't have the other. And you'll find that in some places. I've actually seen 78 PSI at one campground. If you don't know that you've got 78 pounds of water pressure, you're just gonna say, you're gonna get in the shower and say, wow, we've got great water pressure and not realize that you're stressing all the cheap connections. The person that put your hose, hoses in probably made like $12 or $15 an hour. I've talked to a guy who worked on the assembly line and the turnover is incredible because they don't wanna pay anybody a good wage to put the thing together, so they get a bunch of kids and crackheads, not crackheads, but they get a lot of kids and people who just don't know what they're doing. Some of those places will advertise no drug test required. That's who's building your trailer. Latex gloves. You're going to be dealing with poop water. Latex gloves. You can get them anywhere now since COVID. Now, if you've got a camper that has two bathrooms, but you may have two discharges for your black and gray water. Our camper actually has, I think it has three gray tanks and two black tanks. So... With ours, and if you get one like it, you're actually gonna need another poop hose and you're gonna need a Y to connect the two together. And it'll just be, uh, obviously, you'll have one hose coming out of one, you'll have another hose coming out of another, and then you get a Y that you hook both of them into, two in, and then you have one going out to the drain. We need three hoses whenever we set up. I never had a problem with needing an extra long hose. I think ours is 25 footer, the one that we had on the last camper. Um, I believe that's pretty much the standard. I'm seeing some 20 footers. Generally, I've never had a problem with that. I'm sure one day somewhere, somebody's gonna have a problem, they're gonna need more hose. A lot of times you can get them at the campgrounds. Most campgrounds will have a camp store and they'll have some of these basic things. This may or may not apply to you, but you're gonna need dog tie outs or the small pen. And inside, I recommend a cage. Um, if your dog has been crate trained, then it's even better. But if you go out for the day or you just go out to the beach, whatever it is, go out to eat, you can't take the dog with you everywhere. If you leave the dog running around in the trailer, he's going to destroy things. He's got a chance to destroy things. We have one dog that has the energy level of Chris Farley. That's not a pretty sight. Don't want to leave him running around in the camper. Gets scared, gets paranoid, goes, starts poking his nose out the windows, messing up the blinds. Just crate him up. Don't have to worry about it. Five gallon bucket. That sounds stupid. Numerous reasons. When you're having a campfire going, it's a good idea to have a bucket of water just in case there's a problem. When you're cooking with a grill, it's a good idea to have some water lying around. That way, again, if there's a problem. The other thing that you need a five gallon bucket for, and we're just talking your plastic five gallon bucket, you get at Walmart for six or $7.
but the power jack up on the tongue of your camper, the one that runs off of the battery, that automatically raises and lowers just with a switch, those things, they're supposed to be waterproof, but they're not. I actually lost one due to water damage. Oh. A five gallon bucket, just inverted and tossed over the power jack, will protect it. Stuff you're gonna want. They've got a product, they've got a couple different styles, but I'm gonna use the term generically, the brand, X chucks. You'll see them when you go to the campgrounds, they're chrome, they go between the two wheels, between the front and the back wheels on the camper, and it locks them together. Now that's not a chuck to keep you from rolling away, and it says right on the box, don't use it to immobilize the vehicle. That's to help keep you from rocking back and forth. If you lock the wheels, they can't roll, so that gets all the back and forth out of, out of the equation. Chalk, X chocks, I recommend them, but you don't need them, that's a one. Levelers, you can use bits of wood to get by on the first couple of camping trips, but you will end up needing some something a little bit better. We have the Anderson levelers, not cheap. Anything Anderson makes is gonna be good, but it's not gonna be cheap. They work as a chalk, and they also work as a leveler, and they work quite awesome. If you go to the Anderson website and go look at their Anderson levelers, they'll show you, there's a little informational video, it shows you how it works. They're pretty cool. You're gonna want levelers. Sometimes they use, some people use um, like Lego blocks. Little thing about this big and they just snap onto each other. And you just build yourself a small little ramp and you can use it that way. So on that, you're also gonna need a level. Some campers will have the little level bubble that they just stick on the tongue those will get you in, get you roughly right. But I always recommend you getting a two foot level. When you're first pull in before you disconnect and you find out you're not on level ground left to right and you use the levelers or the Lego levelers, you put this up on the side of the camper as your partner pulls up onto the levelers and then you watch, where is it? You watch this one, and then as it goes over, once it's in there, you yell stop, and they're good. Then you still got to level front to back once you disconnect from the truck. You just throw this inside on the floor and raise up, disconnect, and then as you're coming down and you say, see that it looks close, you go over here and sud and just check it. And once it's good, it's good. Dog bones. These are actually electrical adapters. You need these from time to time, and especially if you're gonna hook up at home in the driveway. 110 volt, 15 amp plug, your regular outlet. I'll have ours plugged into that so I can have the refrigerator running and so I can have charging the batteries and everything while I'm getting set up. And then you can listen to some music and TV, what have you. But the dog bones, you're gonna need them. If you have a 30 amp rig, there's a good chance you will one day need a 30 to 50 amp so you can plug into a 50 amp outlet. If you have the choice between a 30 and a 50 amp and you have the dog bone, always choose the 50 amp. And I can probably show you this sometime. The thing is, a 50 amp outlet is used a lot less than the 30 amp. So it's a nice tight fit. The tighter the fit, the better the connection, the better the connection, the less arcing and damage you're gonna get. Again, I'll show you this later on. Now, if you have a 50 amp rig, you're going to need a 50 amp to 30 amp because, again, one day you're going to need it. And then whatever size rig you have, just get a 30 to 15 amp. When we plug in ours here at the house, I pull out the cord. I go from 50 to 30 and then from 30 to 15 amp. So then... Also stuff that you'll want, but you don't need right off the bat. You need a small grill. We like having steaks and we like having burgers. You have to have burgers. Cooking over the fire, that sounds great, but the grill is always rusty and nasty. and You don't know what's died on there and whatever. I don't like that. Um, a lot of people have been going crazy about those Blackstone. I think it's a Blackstone. People are going crazy over it. That's the biggest biggest fad right now, but whatever. Water tote. This is important if you're at one of those state parks, like I said. You're gonna need that, probably more of a need than a want. 
And again, they got them like five gallon, five gallon uh, totes. They're a little bit easier than using a regular five gallon jug and they don't have the nasty chemicals in the plastic. So what I was doing is every time I would leave and come back, I'd bring five gallons of water. That way, theoretically, I never ran out of water. Theoretically. Well, you're also gonna need firewood, of course, and you're gonna need some lighter fluid to get it going and your lighters and matches. And if you don't build a fire, the kids are gonna be upset. Trust me. Surge protector. This is a very expensive one if you're gonna do it properly. You'll get, some things are sold as a surge protector and as nothing more than a GFI adapter. Um, but a good surge protector is going to give you a readout. When you plug in, it's gonna tell you if the electricity is good. Sometimes you get somebody wiring them up, they'll, the load wire and the neutral wire switched. If the ground wire isn't there, it can be a big issue. If the two wires are switched around, it can be deadly. A good, a good surge protector is not only gonna protect against surges, it's gonna protect against low voltage. And that's more common, that's more likely to happen than over voltage. They're not gonna protect you against lightning. Nothing is gonna protect you against 11 billion gigawatts. A surge protector is a very good investment but it's also gonna be very expensive. Honestly, I've never had one. They're very expensive. And like some of these other things, you'll never need it until the day you need it. Stair rugs. If you got aluminum stairs like what we have in our camper, they get slick when they get wet. And even though it's got the grip tape like a skateboard, there's still a lot of exposed aluminum and it gets very slippery. We've already slipped, I twisted my back. Uh, my wife slipped, she caught herself, but she almost went down. Um, you can get little stair rugs, you just wrap it around the stair, you can put a little spring on the bottom, and that's it. Stair rugs are very important on aluminum steps, and if you have the steel steps, it's still kind of important. Just, it's more comfortable than walking on that spread steel with the corrugated and the little spikes. You'll know what I'm talking about if you have them. And then, patio rug, underneath the awning, where you set up your camp chairs, you're going to need... A patio rug and you'll see people using them you'll get it the patio rugs that they re that they require you to use in most parks is it's breathable water goes right through it it does not damage their yard you get them all kinds of different colors different co um, sizes probably different shapes too now just like before listen to me now and believe me later shower head you don't need it, but you're definitely gonna want it. The shower head that comes on these things, they're garbage. They just trickle out water, no good spray pattern, just there. It'll, it'll get you washed. But if you use this kind, if you use this kind, it will reduce the amount of flow, it will increase the pressure, it has a better spray pattern, and by reducing flow, then that means you're not going through your your fresh water when you're camping with water in your fresh water tank with no hookup you need to conserve water if you're camping without a drain you need to conserve water going into your tank so this hits both of them plus it increases the water pressure it's they're great okay spare tire again you'll never need it until the time you need it and like I told you before, you're going to need the tire tools. We already bought those. Spare fuses. Find out what type of automotive fuses your camper takes. You've got the regular plastic blade ones. I think they're called, um, I don't know, they're called, we call them spade fuses. And then you got the little tiny micro ones. Whichever type of fuses your camper takes on the 12 volt system, get a small assortment. But spare fuses you're gonna need them one day camping chairs don't go camping without them yes you're probably going to have a picnic table but you don't want to sit at the picnic table sitting around the fire all weekend get yourself some camp chairs get one for the kid kids have enough for everybody that's there now 
the fold up ones that you throw over your shoulder, those are great. They work great, they store easily, they're lightweight, and you can get them fairly cheap. If you want them to last, you're gonna spend 50 bucks or so each one. They're great, they're awesome. I've got a messed up back. Wife does too. You can get what they call zero gravity chairs. And I'll show you one right here. We have zero gravity for all three of us. It's a recliner that you put by the campfire. Think of it that way. You lean back, you take the load off of your spine, pick up your feet. Right here's a picture of me sleeping in one back behind the kid and the dog. They're great. Not needed, but they're great. You do need some kind of camp chair, though. Walkie-talkies. So, everywhere you go is not going to have a cell signal. And even if you do have a signal, you may have a delay. When you're backing into the campground and you have somebody out back telling you which way to go, there we go. You have somebody out back who's ground guiding you. They're telling you which way to go. They're telling you to stop before you hit something. And you need something that gives that message now. You can do hand signals, but there'll be moments when they're not in your mirrors. Get two-way radios. It could be Spider-Man walkie-talkies, whatever. They work. And then, listen to me now and believe me later, even though you have a refrigerator, you're probably going to want a cooler. Um, drinking beer, I drink a whole lot of pop, but if you have a whole lot of canned beverages, you don't have room in the camper for them. So you just have a cooler sitting outside, fill it with ice. Uh, ice will last you two or three days, which is a full camping, full weekend camping trip. So that's another good one. You don't need to go out and get one of those stupid $200 ones that's going to get stolen. So that's the basics. Even on the wants, that's still basic. So you're going to find all kinds of things you're going to want. You're going to want lights on your awning. You're going to want a sign that you hang out on the tree out front, having your names and your dog's names and the kid's name and all that. You're going to want rope lights to lay down underneath the rig or around the patio. If you have an outdoor kitchen, you're going to want stuff for that. There's all kinds of stuff you're going to want. And you have all kinds of, you got plenty of years to build up to it. These are the things to get you rolling. These are the things that you're going to probably, you're going to want pretty bad. Not quite a need. And these are the things that you just don't even think of. But this is all stuff you're going to need fairly soon when you're camping. It adds up. If you're not, if you haven't bought a camper yet and you know you're going to buy one in the spring, you can start buying some of this now. Um, especially as soon as they bring some of the stuff out in the beginning of spring. It's already starting now, and it's only January. They're already getting stuff up. I saw camp chairs up. I saw, what else? A lot of the stuff is stuff that Walmart has all the time. Do me a favor, everybody, and go ahead and click the like and the subscribe. Uh, leave comments. Tell me what things you do or don't like on my list, and tell your friends. There's a lot of stuff here that some of the channels don't go over, and this is stuff that you need to know, stuff that you need to have, and these lists are not bad. So that's going to do it for this week. Check back next week. I don't know what we're going to have, but we're going to have another one. You can count on it being on Monday at 3 o'clock Eastern Time. Again, I don't believe those other time zones will even exist. Nobody lives out there. So tune in, like, share, subscribe. All that stuff and we'll see you again three o'clock next week and we'll see you at the campground <laughs>